Hey friends, and welcome to the Happy Hour with Jamie Ivey podcast. I'm your host, Jamie, and I'm so glad you're here. Each week on this show, I invite a girlfriend to join me and we chat about the big things in life, the little things in life, and everything in between. If you have a friend who leaves you frustrated and tired, you might be stuck in one of the seven deadly friendships. In her book, The Seven Deadly Friendships, Mary DeMuth defines the messiest relationships, helps you set boundaries with people who sap your joy, and shows when it's time to ditch a deadly friendship for good. Take the deadly friendship quiz and learn more at sevendeadlyfriendships.com. That's the number seven, deadlyfriendships.com. Happy Wednesday, you guys. It is the last Wednesday in November, which means we are done with Thanksgiving and we are moving on into the Christmas season. I hope you had a phenomenal Thanksgiving if you live here in the States. I really hope no matter where you live that you heard our holiday gift guide that aired last Friday. Oh my gosh, I've already got so many of my gifts bought just from that one episode. Go listen if you haven't heard it. Check out the blog for all the links. They have discount codes. We've got all kinds of incentives to shop there. And it's just a lot of great companies that I believe in and I think you'll love as well. Today, my guest is one of the funniest women that you're ever going to meet, while also being one of the most deeply profound women I've ever sat down with. Melissa Ratke is the author of Eat Cake, Be Brave. She's a wife. She's a mama. She's the biggest fan of her East Texas hometown, Lufkin, and she is a soon-to-debut reality TV star. I am not kidding. We're going to talk about it. On today's show, we talk about being scared while also being brave. Melissa's new show, The Radkeys, it's going to premiere early in 2019 on the USA Network. We talk about what it's been like to film a reality TV show. We talk about marriage. We talk about miscarriages. We talk about hard seasons of marriage. We talk about restoration in marriage. We talk about emotional affairs. We talk about friends, walking with friends through difficultness in your marriage. We talk about vegan queso. You guys, this is such a fun show. I knew when Melissa came into my studio that I was going to probably cry from laughter but I wasn't also prepared to cry from just such deep, profound conversations. I loved having her in my studio and you're gonna love her as well. You guys, I wanna tell you that we are about to close the Happy Hour Facebook page and we're gonna do everything over at my Jamie Ivy Facebook page. The easiest way to find me on Facebook is just to go to jamieivy.com slash Facebook. That's my Facebook page where we talk about the show, we post upcoming events. So come join us over there. Guys, I also want to remind you that we are selling books over at my store, books that I wrote. I wrote a book that released this year called If You Only Knew, and my husband Aaron wrote a book that released last year called Steal Away Home. Both of those books are available in my store, and when you buy them through the end of the year, we're going to sign them for you as well. And if you want to buy it for a gift for a friend and you want us to make it out to them, you can put that in the notes when you check out, and we'll do that as well. Go to jamieivy.com slash store, and you can see both our books over there. I also have these really cute gift cards that is a downloadable audiobook of If You Only Knew. Perfect gift to give someone this Christmas, a stocking stuffer, a teacher gift, someone that you know loves the show. So head on over there and we'll sign those books for you. You guys, I hope you enjoyed the last Wednesday of your November. And here is my conversation with my friend, Melissa Radke. Melissa, welcome to the happy hour. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy that you're here. I'm so glad you got to meet me finally. Well, this is just <laughs> the best. Okay, I'm trying to remember how I first found out about you. And I think I know. Huh. Um, I think I got your book in the mail. Was like, that the first? It was. I'm sorry. Ugh, that's I why know. I hate stuff like that. Can I just go on record as saying, when you write a book and then they say, you know, who, what influencers do you want to send it to? I was like, I don't know anybody and nobody knows me. Everyone is just as surprised as I am that I've written a book. And I hated that part. Why did you hate that part? It just feels awkward. It's like, hi, you don't know me, but would you sell me? Mm, Yeah. No, I get it. Do you not feel that way sometimes? Yes, but I will tell you, I'm going to give you some, I'm going to make you feel better about yourself. Okay. I get a lot of books in the mail. You do? I get a lot of books Mm -hmm. because the media, you know, people want to come on the show. I got your book and I immediately wanted to read it. Why? The cover. The cover. (sighs) You didn't think the cover was cheesy? No, I thought, I need to know this person. (laughs) I still think it's cheesy sometimes. Would you change it if you could do it again? You know what? I probably would. Oh, here's a true story. 
Um, so I'm, I'm on, if you don't know what book, uh, the book cover, she's talking about eat cake, be brave. I'm on the cover. I'm holding a cake. And I always felt like, um, a little bit embarrassed by that just because nobody wants their picture out there. And I don't know, but then I was doing a media interview one day on a radio station, a very big radio station. And they thought that they had muted the DJ. Oh no. And it's not, it's not super offensive. Don't worry. But I heard. So you weren't in the studio. Nope. I was doing it on the phone. Uh Uh-huh. And he said, is our guest ready? And his assistant said, yeah, she's ready to pull up uh, any minute. You know, uh, she's ready to go. And he said, okay, this is the book. The assistant said, yes. And he goes, oh God, she looks so annoying. Oh, I'm dreading this. She's going to be so annoying. He said that, which, which is better than, you know. Yeah. And some other Look at this, you know, she, you know, whatever. She's horrid. I mean, I was. So you had to start the interview hearing that. Yes. Did did. he know you heard it? No, he did not. And all, all of my team was like, why didn't you say something? It wasn't worth, what am I going to do? Confront him on the air? That's so ridiculous. But I just gave a great interview. I wasn't annoying. He actually enjoyed me, I think. I don't know. Um, we had a great interview and I walked out of there feeling like the bigger person. But I don't know why. Ever since then, wow. I've been like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have been on the cover. And I've been second guessing that since that moment. Wow. But you didn't second guess it before that? I really didn't. Okay. And now I look and I go, maybe it is stupid. Maybe I do look ridiculous. But I'm here with you. And you said it's the reason why you wanted to read it. It's the reason why I wanted to read it. And I can tell you, I like you way better mm-hmm. than that guy. Yeah. So. I'm nicer than him. <laughs> way nicer. And you do not look annoying <laughs> at all. Um, that makes me sad. It really does. But I'm not kidding when I say that that's why I wanted to read the book was because of the cover. Because well, it was thanks. different. Yeah. It really stands out on a shelf and... People that listen to the show, they know I talk about book covers a lot because I think they, a lot of, there are a lot of books out there these days. Mm -hmm. You need a cover that is going to stand out. And so you did just that. Yeah. And it was a, it was really a scary deal for me. You know, I was on the cover. I'm a plus size woman. And yet I put myself out there on the cover. All my girlfriends know I never go sleeveless, but what am I on the cover? I'm in sleeveless. You know, I didn't, I just laid to rest all the fears of what if I'm a target? What if people say something? What if people point and laugh? I just laid it all to bed. Mm -hmm. It's a book about bravery. And I decided the bravest thing I could do was show myself on the cover, feel beautiful. Mm -hmm. And in that, on that day, I felt beautiful. Well, you look beautiful. (laughs) Thanks. You know, I find it interesting too, that your book is about bravery and courage. And you're saying, I felt beautiful on that day and I did it. But yet, you're still honest about there have been times it's been really hard. Like you said, since that guy, I've wondered, should I have done this? And I think sometimes the misconception is, oh, she's so brave. She's so courageous. She doesn't struggle with that anymore. No, I talk about the fact, I talk about this in the book. I say, hey, fear is real. Anxiety is a real thing. Um, Nerves and getting sick at your stomach and butterflies and second guessing and doubting. Those are all real. It's how we walk through life with them. Um, that matters the most. I mean, th- those are real things. I mean, Jamie, I got nervous coming here today to talk to you. It's a and new so far, situation. It's unknown and this all the things. Yeah, easy peasy. Uh huh. But come on, I'm a real human mm-hmm. with real fears. But I wanna, I wanna go for God's will. I wanna change, you know, the world as brave as I can. Mm. And sometimes you're brave while shaking in your boots. And putting on a sleeveless shirt. <laughs> putting on a sleeveless shirt. That's right. <laughs> okay, so you're an East Texas girl, Lufkin. Mm-hmm. Shout out to all my East Texas listeners. Yes. Um, mama to two. Yep. Husband. To one. Husband to one. <laughs> your one love. Mm-hmm. And you guys are doing some really cool things these days. Okay, so I am coming into this with lots of questions. Okay. Bring because Hit me. you just signed, not did you just sign up, you just finished filming Mm-hmm. A reality TV show. Yes. Okay, so when I heard you were going to do this, I'll be honest, I get nervous. Why? Well, sometimes people do reality TV and they <laughs> look crazy. <laughs> yes. Yes, I would agree. <laughs> and so I'm like nervous. for You're nervous for me and like, what is she doing? I'm nervous for what are they going to make? What if they make your family look crazy? I feel, I feel you. I've gone through all of these emotions. We've had all these talks. Trust me. You trust these people. How? Oh, um, here's the deal. I asked God one million different ways to shut the door. Mm-hmm. 
I told for you, you need to know, first off, I am a big personality. I got big old Texas hair. I'm a lot. But reality TV was never on the radar for me at all. It was never a dream or an so aspiration. So you're not out thinking this would be amazing. Absolutely not. It came out of left mm-hmm. field. Never was hoping for it, secretly wishing for it. I've never written about it in my journal. Okay, never. So when it came to me and it was so out of the blue and I began to pray about it, I told God, I'm telling you, you can shut the door. You can shut it today. You can shut it next week. It's not an aspiration of mine. So I'm a, I'm a be fine. If this doesn't if go this through. If this doesn't yeah. go through. And I, I mean, I'm telling you, I asked every question frontwards and backwards and it was, it never, God never closed the door. In fact, he kept making it plainly obvious that this is where you this were is the way to I walk in it. Yeah. And I'm telling you, whether it succeeds or fails, it, for whatever reason, God is in it. I know that he's in it. And it's not on like a Christian network. No, it's on USA Network. Uh-huh. Um, who has, you know, is the home of another uh, reality show, The Chrisley, Chrisley Knows Best. I watch that when I'm in hotels. We don't have cable, but I watch that <laughs> in hotels. Yeah, yeah. Do you know them? I, well, no, he's actually reached out to me. And so we've emailed back and forth okay. a couple of times. Um, so he was this big, loud Southern personality, this male personality. They were looking for a female. And uh, yeah, so here I am. That's not what you asked me. So though. does the show center around you? It's around me and David and Remy and Rocco. They call us the core four. So they'll say, hey, today we're shooting and we're just really dealing with the core four. But they do bring in um, my mom a lot, my Aunt Melba a lot. My granny's in there some, um, a girlfriend of mine. And, uh, but yes, I'm, I'm the main I listen, I'm in, listen, baby. I'm telling you that I'm nervous, but I'm like also giddy excited for you <laughs> because this has, it has, it had to have been super fun. You've already finished the filming. Mm-hmm. You think it's going to, you don't know when it's going to air, but this is coming out after Thanksgiving. I'll let you guys know if it's out or when it's coming, but we're hoping first of the first of January, February. Okay. But you know, I don't, you've never, probably never been to Lufkin, but my, my town is small. And it is a blue collar town. It's a hardworking town with hardworking people. It's not fancy. It's not the most beautiful town in the world. But oh my word, do I love it. I am partial to Lufkin. Born and raised there. Moved away for a long time. Came back to it. It's, it's the town that raised me. And that was my biggest thing. I said, look, you're not going to make fun of my family, that they're Southern, that, you know, you might even find a washing machine in their front yard. You're not going to make fun of it. Yeah. And you're definitely not going to make fun of this town. I love this town. So if you can't be in agreement with us there, please let's part ways. You'll find another girl with big hair and a big mouth. You will. Um, The president of the network flew to Lufkin, spent three days. She said, I'm telling you right now, this town will be a character on this show. It is precious. The people are kind. I've seen um, some of the episodes, just little clips here and there that they've that they filmed, and they are very, very good to us. Very good to us. They like us as much as I like us. That is, <laughs> I, I, I'm so excited for you. Yeah. I have two other friends who have done reality TV, and it's just fun to hear about how it all goes down as well. Like the filming. I mean, taking over your house for like six weeks. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And and how much you, you probably, my friends that have also done this, they become friends with the crew. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We're still texting and I'm like, one of them is, you know, trying to kick the nicotine habit. Uh-huh. And I'm, you know, I mean, we're, we're friends. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how your friends that did reality TV felt about it, but, but when they pulled out of town, it was a hard day for me. Yeah. Um, not because they cut the cameras off, but because they left and they left me better than they found me. I feel like. To be perfectly that. honest. I love that. How have your kids handled it? The kids have handled it well. The schedule is hard because we started filming on the first day that they started school. Oh, a lot of change. A so lot. It's a lot. Yeah. And Remy's first year of middle school. Oh. So that was a lot for her. They would come in in the afternoons and then they would shoot. Uh, and it was, so it was very difficult for them. Mm-hmm. They loved it. They loved the crew. They surrounded us with great, great people who loved my kids dearly. Um, And they miss them. They miss them. But I do worry. I will be honest. I worry about when it comes out, what that will do to my children. Mm -hmm. Um, Let's just say I'm I'm keeping close watch and I I keep a thumb on them anyway as their mama. But Mm -hmm. I'm not letting anything go to their head. We're I want them to know that this is a hey, this is a kingdom thing. This is a God thing. We're on a mission here. Mm -hmm. I don't know 
why this is our mission field, but it is. Yeah. I have to keep them looking at it like that. Yeah. And that's really good to keep that as the whole family mindset as well. Mm-hmm. Like this is why we do what we do. Everything. Yeah. Everything that we do. Absolutely. That's what we talk about here at the Ivy household too. Like what's the purpose? Right. Is it kingdom purpose? And you know? if it's only for one. If it was only for one crew member or one producer or one viewer, I mean, that's how far God mm-hmm. would go, first of yeah. all, yeah. for one person. You know what I'm saying? But I, I don't think it's just for one. I just, I just can't figure out what he's doing. He's cooking something up. Okay, so let's talk about after the show comes out. You've released a book. Mm-hmm. Now you're going to have a reality show. What's the name? You can't we tell us. Decided yet? Oh, can you? You can't say. We have not. De- well, I, I would. I probably would tell you. I say a lot of things, Jamie, that I'm not supposed to say. <laughs> but, uh, but we actually haven't decided. Okay. It's, it's narrowed down to about three things okay. right now. I heard some options on Annie's podcast. I don't know if they've changed since then, they and have, I don't remember them actually. So, and, and yeah, and two of them are still in the running. Okay. But now I thought of another one that was kind of cute. And I just mentioned it a couple Threw weeks ago, there. and they're like. <gasps> Ooh, it's so. like book titles. I mean, you're think you're about to yeah. name something that has to catch an eye and last forever. Absolutely, and yeah. then I got to be proud of exactly. Okay, so you have your book release, uh, your new show that's coming out. Mm-hmm. What what does life look like after that? Do you have any clue? It seems like I feel like you're in a crazy season now. Mm-hmm. It feels like it's going to continue. Well, you know, it's funny that you asked that because I. It all happened so fast from the from the moment that, first of all, all of this came to be because of a viral video. And I do have people that will say, oh, can you believe this girl's got a, a book and a TV show all because she made some stupid video talking about Red Ribbon Week and now look at, okay, I need people to know I have worked my hand in off for years, for years, for years. Scripture tells us to be ready in season and out. And I was, that video was just the way God chose to make all of this happen for me. So I'd worked really hard. I have my degree in vocal performance. I mean, I've been on a stage for a long time, public speaking. I was public speaking for churches who could pay me with a sun catcher to hang in my way. You've been there. Starbucks gift card. Absolutely. Yes. In a cute cup though. In a cup. With an M on it. With with, filled with peppermint. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) So it's precious. We're not making fun if y'all are listening. We are no. That is amazing. And we are grateful. I'm here today. Yeah, exactly. Because of that Starbucks uh, and I cup. love those people. And I've paid my dues. So this was just all, you know, a, arranged some way by God. But the funny thing is it did all happen so fast that now that the filming is over and now that the book is out, I do kind of go, well, what now? Mm-hmm. Because those were never even... I never even dared to dream those things. And now those have happened. So what now? And I feel a little bit lost. Yeah. Is that normal? Yeah, I think so. And especially because when I'm hearing you say this is you've been doing all of these things, but so many of us didn't know, Melissa, Mm -hmm. because you were doing it where you were doing it. You're doing it right where God had you. And then this viral video happens, the book, the TV show, then all of a sudden it's like, oh, she just showed up. And you're like, well, no, I actually didn't just show up. (laughs) But thanks. It's like when someone wins like um, new artist of the year and you're like, oh, that's so awesome. They've been working so hard this year. And they're like, We've been on the road for 15 years. And now we <laughs> That's just- That's very true. You know? I'm the new artist of you the year. You are new artist of the year. That's Congratulations. Right. <laughs> the winner Thank is you. Melissa Radke. Um, but so it's like that. But I understand that of what now? Well, yeah. It, I guess I kind of- Well, really, could there be a season two? I mean, just to, I mean, is yeah, that an option? Absolutely. Okay. In fact, um, on Annie Downs podcast, she said, what can I What can I pray specifically for about the show? What What does the prayer need? And I said, well, first of all, it's hard. Filming is hard. And if we're going to do it, can you just please pray that there's a season two? Like, what was this all for if there's Mm -hmm. only one season? So, heck yes. I mean, uh, viewership is what they base it off of. What Mm -hmm. are people talking? What's the buzz? And then they'll decide if we get a season two. Yeah. And I would love for that to happen. But it's kind of like, you know, I went through 12 years of infertility. We adopted both of our children. I worked so hard for that. I prayed so hard. I fasted. I mean, my knees were were bruised from, from bending down in prayer over that. And then when my kids were about two and three, I'm like, well, what now? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you yeah, know? yeah. You see, uh-huh. why is it we work so hard? We blood, sweat, and tears for something. Then we're like, eh, okay, and that now was what? over. Now yeah, what? yeah. Well, sometimes I even go, I can't believe that this is actually like my job in my life. 
Yeah. It's like more than you, like you said, it's more than we could have ever imagined. Uh-huh. And so I think that should also give us confidence that there's more out there than we could ever imagine. Yeah. You didn't imagine this. Nope. And look at God just coming through. There's no way we can even imagine what's next. I know. Your it's family. Just, yeah. Are we going to be ready and open to it? Mm-hmm. And so just, just this past week, I, one of the reasons I looked so forward to coming and meeting with you was really the time away it was going to take to get here. I needed some time alone Mm -hmm. to just think. And um, while I have this moment before the show comes out and it gets really, really crazy, there's some internal stuff that I want to, I want God and I to work on, Mm -hmm. you know? So whenever there's a downtime, I'm going to, I'm going to check myself. I'm going to, I'm seeing, I see a counselor um, biweekly. I think that's very important for me to maintain my focus and it helps me to talk and, and she's helping me work through some things because there's some issues in our family right now. Um, Not my immediate family, but my outside family. And I'm, so if it's a downtime, I want to take some Mm self-inventory, work on some things. Yeah. Why do you think working on ourselves is so hard? (laughs) Because we think everyone else has the problem. You know, it's just so much easier to point out than to point in. Yeah. And um, for me in this season, it's speaking the truth over some situations in my family that I haven't wanted to say out loud Mm. for a very long time. Um, because my favorite quote is look reality in the eye and deny it. <laughs> mm, nice. And I've lived by that uh-huh. mm, a good majority of all. Yeah. How's that working for you? It's worked out great. <laughs> you sound like Dr. Phil. Yeah. How's that, how's working, that working for, for you? you? <laughs> um, but so, yeah, of course we'd rather point it out, you know, mm-hmm. uh, in other people than ourselves. But I wrote a book on my struggle to be self-aware and to heal some things. So why stop now? Yeah. You Which know? is another hopeful thing is that you. Sh- this is a constant work that we're doing mm-hmm. on ourselves and yeah. within our family. All right, you guys, I know you're loving this show and you don't want it to stop, but I want to thank our sponsors because they make the happy hour possible. The first sponsor that I want to thank is Third Love. Using millions of real women's measurements, Third Love designs its bras with breast size and shape in mind for an impeccable fit and incredible feel. With lightweight memory foam cups, straps that won't slip, can I get an amen on that, girls, and tagless labels, you'll want to wear these soft and breathable bras and underwear every single day, especially the new cotton t-shirt bras and underwear. But thanks to the 100% fit guarantee, returns and exchanges are free and easy. You guys, I love Third Love and almost all of my bras are Third Love. I love that they fit so comfortable. I love that they're tagless. I love that returns are easy if they don't fit. Third Love knows that there's a perfect bra for everyone. So right now they're gonna offer you, my listener, 15% off your first order. Guys, it's worth trying if you never have because they're gonna give you 15% off. Go to thirdlove.com slash Jamie right now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash Jamie for 15% off today. Guys, I also want to thank another sponsor for today's show, and that is Away Luggage. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that I use my Away Luggage every time I travel. And this holiday season, Away has the perfect gift for everyone on your list. Away creates thoughtful standards for modern travel with universal pieces that reflect your personal travel style and make every trip more seamless. They've considered all types of travelers in making their carry-on bags, which are available in two sizes and come with an optional ejectable battery that charges your phone up to five times. Plus, they feature four 360-degree spinner wheels, a removable washable laundry bag, a TSA-approved combination lock, and an interior compression system that lets you pack more. You guys, let me tell you something. I am a fan of this interior compression system that lets you pack more because every single time I travel, I pack it up, pack it up, and then I literally have to sit on my bag to zip it and it always zips. I used the smallest away carry-on bag this summer for nine days in Italy. I just recently upgraded to the larger carry-on and I love both of them so much. For $20 off a suitcase, visit awaytravel.com slash happy hour and use that promo code happy hour during checkout. That's awaytravel.com slash happy hour and use promo code happy hour during checkout for $20 off a suitcase because this season, everyone wants to get away. 
Okay, friends, here is the rest of my conversation with Melissa Radke. Take me back to when you guys lived in Nashville. Mm -hmm. Because y'all were in Nashville for how long? 16 years. And what took y'all to Nashville? Belmont University. Okay. We got married young. So we got married our sophomore year in college. Babies. Yeah. And um, decided to finish school there and graduate from there and be in the music business. Okay. And you were singing? I was. I was a session singer. And he was? He was in business management. Okay. He managed a couple of Christian artists. He worked with... Uh, newsboys and audio adrenaline. He managed Chris Rice. Do you remember Chris Rice? Oh, yes, I remember Chris Rice. Yes, he managed, he was his manager for six years. That is awesome. Um, And so that's what we did. And then David put himself through law school there okay. as well. And he became an entertainment attorney. Okay. And I was just doing session work. And then towards the, our final years in Nashville, I was doing session work part-time and trying to have a baby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the other part, yeah. I mean, yeah. that, that literally was a full-time yeah. job right yeah. there. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, I heard someone say the other day that the newsboys are getting back to, like, you know how they've had different lead singers for a long time yeah. and they're all going to get back together and do a show. Wasn't the newsboys Peter Furler with the bald I head? I don't know. I, yo, I think he did. I, the, yeah, bald the, like head the bald sounds head sounds familiar. Um, I think so. They I were really cool. Are you too young to remember I'm them? 40. Okay. That's but I didn't start following Jesus so I was in my early 20s. Okay. And so I miss a lot of that Christian music culture. Yeah, well, and that was CCM. Yes. And see, I was never really a CCM girl. So David would come in and he'd be like, hey, guess who I get to go out with this weekend or work with this Uh weekend? And I'd be like, "Um, unless it's for him, not interested. (laughs) You know, I was more like church music kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love some for him. Yeah, I did too. When I first started following Jesus, which is funny because I was 21 and I left a really kind of crazy lifestyle, but then I kind of attached myself to people like Sandy Patty. Like I loved Sandy Patty. Really? Isn't that weird? That is, that, yeah. Well, I mean, she's not weird. It was weird for me, that change. Yeah, 21. Yeah, I know. Absolutely. Oh, she was big, baby. Yeah. She was huge. But I saw you guys on your Insta story the other day. So oh, Jamie, did you see Vickers Chapman? Oh, I know all the words. Yes. Oh, Absolutely. I can't remember what I read in my Bible yesterday, but I can sing the entire I'm Diving In song. Oh, yeah. The entire song. I know. I... Um, I loved, okay, well, first of all, one of the first people that David Radke, my, I, well, I don't know why I, I call him Aaron husband. Ivy, Aaron Ivy. Do you really? I, I say Aaron <gasps> Ivy all the time. I call him David Radke. Okay, that makes me so happy. Yeah. Okay, one of the first monumental things that David did was he helped produce, he co-produced an album for a friend of ours, Ronnie Freeman, and he co-produced it with Michael W. Smith. So Michael W. Smith was really the first person to kind of give David his big break. Yeah. And um, so I've, I've, I was never super big fan of his music, but then I met him mm. and I like that. I like it when I meet someone and I go, oh my gosh. And I'm he's a- the real deal. I liked him so oh. much. So very, very much. I, I went to a Christmas party at their home and I saw how he treated his wife and I was like, dude, I'm in, I'm in for you forever. Mm. So now I know a lot of his music. Because you you saw each, he's a nice husband. Yeah. Well, now I follow him on Instagram. Do you follow uh, him on Instagram? I don't. I, I don't think know why. I do. I don't know why. But now he's got all these grandkids. I know the man is old. I know. Which <laughs> I still think he's like, I don't know, 40. <laughs> he's, he's not. not. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So let's talk about David Radke. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about marriage. Um, you've been um, really honest and vulnerable about how marriage has been hard. Yeah. For David and Melissa. Um, Talk with me about that and what that, what seasons you guys have gone through. Well, David and I, um, first of all, when you said, let's talk about David Radke, I just smiled because I just, (laughs) I'm just wild about him. You love, here's, here's from what I know, which is your book, the, the 24 minutes we've been sitting down together (laughs) and following on Instagram is that you do, you love your man. I, I really, really, I really do. I just. I think he's the best. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes I love him so much that I'm like, God, don't take him away from me to teach me a lesson. <laughs> I know, other, another lesson, another lesson. <laughs> right. But I just think he's the best. Um, we've been married 24 years and I was speaking at a pretty large church on a Sunday morning. This has been about six years ago. And he was on the front row and I got up and I was doing the hi, good morning. I'm so glad to be here with you today. And I was introducing him. I said, <laughs> right off the bat, I said, this is my husband, David. We've been married 20 years and 15 of them have really been great. And it was the first time I ever said that. And I just remembered as I said it, 
because I don't filter anything. Uh-huh. I looked down at him and he was doubled over laughing. And I was like, oh, he agrees. Yay. <laughs> so now we've been married 24 years and 18 of them have been wonderful. But I'll tell you, there are, when I say that there have been years that have been bad, I don't mean like when we went through a dark season. I mean, like we both contacted our own divorce attorneys and we split things up. Mm-hmm. Who will take what? Um we decided that I would have to live with my parents for a while while he sold the house. I mean, we we did wow. all that. We made all the plans. The marriage was over. Um, and that's not even the worst of it. Mm. There's a book, a chapter in my book called Lovers and Leavers. And um, it was a chapter that I knew that I wanted to write from the very beginning, but I could not write it without his blessing. Mm-hmm. Because the chapter is about um, at the end of our infertility, when I say the end of it, I mean, we were at the end of our rope. We were at the end of ourselves. We had decided if this doesn't work, we're, we're done. We had had four miscarriages um, and we were just at the end of ourselves. We began to grieve. And when I say we gr- grieve separately, I mean, literally one end of the house and the other. Yeah. Like I didn't want him in bed with me. I didn't want him touching me. Mm-hmm. Sex was a science experiment that I was failing at. Yeah. And so I would say, why don't you sleep upstairs? And we just began to grow apart. And during that time, I had a friend who was caring for me a lot, who was taking care of me and she would bring dinners over and she would check on me. And we were very, very, very close. And um, David began an emotional relationship, an emotional affair with her. And this is a significant story for women Mm -hmm. and not enough people are talking about it. And you know why they're not? I can tell you why, because it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. It's humbling to sit here and tell you, hey, my husband fell in love with my best friend and that was awesome. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But our most vulnerable stories are our most powerful thing. And so I knew that I needed to write that chapter but I had to have him be okay with it. So I wrote it and an interesting thing happened. I wrote the entire chapter and I was going to have my editor look at it and proofread it all, make sure it was okay before I gave it to him. And she sent it back to me and you probably do not like foul language on your show, so I will not use foul language. But what she said was, wow, you certainly have made him out to be a son of a, you know, Uh And yet I'm hard pressed to believe you weren't an a-hole yourself. And I wrote her back and I'm like, what the crap are you talking yeah. about? And she said, you've written this so one-sided. Oh. Were you an angel to live with? Is all I'm asking. If you weren't, then your readers need to know the truth. And I was angry at well, that. Yeah. I was really angry. She was calling me out and I didn't like it. D- don't you dare freaking uh-huh. call me out yeah. on my own marriage. Just, just check I the lived commas it. and get, send it back. Yeah, yeah. I lived it. But what she had done was she had taken David's side and she had said, look, so let me get this straight. So her and I talked about it later. So let me get this straight. You've gone through four miscarriages. You've gone through about 10 years at this point of infertility. You won't let him touch you. He's living upstairs in a different room, but you're a peach. You're a peach to live with. And I I told David about it. And he said, you really want to talk about what it was like then? You want to talk about how lonely I was? You want to talk about how broken you were? You want to talk about it? Because there's a reason. There's a reason why I was empty. And there's a reason why I wanted somebody to admire me and look at me and and compliment me and tell me how wonderful. There was a reason. And we talked about it. And then my chapter just wrote itself. Mm. It just wrote itself so honestly and so vulnerably that I, is that a word? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. I wasn't a peach. I was really difficult. And I think when you read the chapter, you realize why he was hurting Mm. and did what he did. And um, I am not a woman. You know, there's this woman, women that say, kick him out of the house, burn his car, key his car, girl, throw his stuff in the front yard. And then there's also the woman that's like, sometimes that's like, um, it was me. Mm -hmm. It was all me. No, it wasn't either of those things. Mm -hmm. It was us. Yeah. And I cannot believe my editor, you know, she's not even really a woman of faith, mm. you know, um, called me out Aren't like that. Aren't she glad she did? Yes. I really, it was, it was a God thing yeah. because when I rewrote it and I gave it to him, he just wept oh. and he cried and he said, fine. 
fine. If it'll heal somebody, use it. So my question that I'm having right now is how, what was the conversation like whenever this happened? Because it sounds like that did a lot of healing for you guys. Mm -hmm. What did it look like for you guys to walk through that? Like, I'm not asking for you to tell me a story about what happened, but I'm saying that chapter did so much healing because you kind of maybe had this aha moment of, Mm -hmm. oh, wait, this was, I have to take some responsibility here. Was that a first time that you had thought that? No, not necessarily. I I had taken a lot of responsibility for it, for sure, in counseling. David and I had a lot of counseling um, to mend that time. And I had, but writing about it, sharing it with the world what you've done wrong is a lot differently different than sharing it with a counselor in the privacy of that setting. And I did not want to, to share my faults because there is always that, that trap door in a woman's heart mm-hmm. that says, but you still shouldn't have done it. Right, right. You still shouldn't have uh-huh. looked outside the marriage. Right. But in order to be honest... Mm-hmm. <laughs> I had to write about some things that I had not really, you know, because the truth of the matter is we did heal. We did go to counseling. God, I am a, I am a product of restoration. And so sometimes we just kind of forget. We don't look back at that. We just keep going Mm -hmm. forward and getting better. And I had to look back. I had to, I had to remember some things. Do you think that your marriage is stronger because of what you guys went through? Well, mercies. Yes, absolutely. Would you choose it to get here? Um, uh, crap, I really would. Dang it. I wish there was a better way, but I would because I know him differently now. I know David when he hurts. I know how he retreats. I know what the signs are. You know, I dealt with depression for many years of my life. And now... Much like you, if you felt the flu coming on, you would say, Aaron Ivy, my throat hurt, my body's aching, I know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Now I do that with depression. Mm. And now I also do it with with my marriage. Mm-hmm. Right? Flags go off, the radar bells go off. You know, they're signaling trouble, trouble here. When he acts a certain way or when he retreats, he notices it with me. Yeah. Would we know those things in each other if we hadn't have done that and had that experience? I doubt we would. Right, right. Can we talk about what your friendship relationships looks like after that? Like, how can we, because my question, my thought always is, this is way more common than, I mean, you said, we don't want to talk about this because it's embarrassing, Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Um, And so my first thought is, man, what about women who are walking around dealing with, I feel embarrassed and I don't want to say this. What can a friend do? to a friend who's in a hurting marriage, if that makes sense, that question. Like what can, if I'm your friend and you and David are walking through that five year season of darkness, what is my job to be a good friend to you? How do I even do that? Well, I'm actually really glad you asked that because this is important for people to know. We want you to continue to love our husband. Mm. Please just keep loving him. Would you just believe the best in him? Would you just remember every card game that y'all played where you stayed up late and everybody laughed and the brownies you ate? And and would you just remember the fun times and how we went on vacation together and how, you know, what a good father he is? Would you remind me of those times? Would you just love him? Um, Because girls, we're like, you mess with my girl, I'm done with you. Right. That's how we do. We do do that. that. So I'm sitting down the other night, literally two weeks ago, I'm sitting down with one of my close friends and she's going through a difficult time in her marriage and she's telling me about it. A real difficult time. I, this is real. This is, okay, a decision must be made. Here we are. And I want to rail on him and I want to just tell her, huh, you know, all these things. I want to say, Stella, let me tell you how to get your groove mm-hmm. back. There you go, <laughs> yep. And I sat there and I listened to her and I said, yes, I know. Oh my gosh, I know. And then I looked across the table and I said, but man, I can't stop loving him. And she got huge tears. They just filled up her eyes. And she said, please don't, please don't stop loving him. I need someone to stay objective, please. You know, I know that there's good in there. And I just decided in that moment, then that's what I'll do. I'll Mm -hmm. keep loving him. And I had friends that did that for me. I was hurt at David. I was embarrassed by David. 
but they were like, oh, but my goodness, what a what a man he is. Broken, absolutely. But what a man. Mm-hmm. And those friends are still in my life. Yeah. I think the ones who wanted to burn him down and the ones who wanted him to get his, I don't know that I'm in contact with them much anymore. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I mean, I could just get on a soapbox here because this is such what you had, you guys walk through and your friend is going through. Sometimes they're so out in the open that people can see them, but yet we're all walking around so broken, Mm -hmm. like with limps and missing limbs and making bad choices, but just nobody sees it. Yeah. You know? And so then you have some kind of sin that looks like this. It looks like the really big bad ones Mm -hmm. and everyone can see it. Right. And so it's almost a disservice because we would treat David differently. Mm -hmm. But what about my sin that you just can't see? Exactly. It's just as ugly. But his got brought to light. Exactly. Everybody in town now knows his. Um, yeah. And Which, I mean, it's crazy that it is. We want our sin to be brought to the light. I mean, the Bible says this is how healing happens. Mm-hmm. But yet when it ha- when it is brought to the light, it sucks. It really, really does. It really sucks. And it will make you think twice about sinning. Well, I mean, praise God, right? You, you know, I mean, yeah. you will think, do I want this brought to the light? <laughs> I think not. Yeah. But, you know, if you were listening, if, you know, if you've been listening to this podcast the whole time, then you heard me say, we sat down with divorce attorneys and then you heard me say, but this wasn't even about that. Mm. So what I'm saying is David and I healed and we got better and we got broken again. We got broken because we, we moved back to Texas. We now had two children. We went through some really financial. So that divorce stuff wasn't even attached to this. No, no. Oh. David and I have been through seasons. Yeah. That's why I say 24 years and 17 have been great. Yeah. Um, we've we've been through some seasons. One was an emotional relationship. One was finances. One was the death of dreams for mm. him. Moving from Nashville was the light, the crucifying of some dreams of his. I mean, he went to work for my father and it felt like a blow to him. He was an entertainment attorney in Nashville, but the music business took a dive. We moved back home. We were living in 800 square feet, all four of us, in my parents' guest house. Mm. Um, we lost badly on our home in Nashville. I mean, this was a man. I mean, he was br- he was devastated by yeah. that. And all I knew was I was back with my mama. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I was, I was back, back with my mama. She's cooking for us. My dad got, gave you a job uh-huh. and now we're taken care of. You think that helps a man's right. pride? And yeah. pr- Are you kidding me? So here we go. This is now our next season. And um, we, we have been there and done that and have the scars to prove it. Mm. Our marriage is stronger today, but it has, I, I dare say that there's a couple that we could sit down with that would shock us. We've, we've seen it all. We've hurt each other so deeply, so badly, but I'm here to tell, I'm here as a product of restoration. I say that. I mean, look at me. I am textbook. You look up what the locusts have eaten. God will, rest- I, it's me. It's my picture. Yeah. Okay, so if someone is listening and they're like, the papers are on my desk, like I am done, we're dividing it up, I'm moving back to my mama's house. I know you would want like hours with them, but what would you say? Like, what what do you say to that? And I know there's like circumstances in life and there's no way to sum this up, but you've been there with the papers, with the, I'm moving back with my mom and we're dividing this stuff up. And God restored that. What is your, what would you say to someone who's sitting there feeling that same thing? Well, whenever I talk about marriage, you inevitably have the people that say, but what if he's abusive? Uh uh Okay, don't hear what Mm. I'm not saying. Right, thank you. Please, please seek help and get, get, get safe, you and your children. But in the situations and circumstances that you and I are talking about, what would I say to those women? You're right, I would need hours. But I would just say, I have been to the lowest that it can get. I have I have sat and looked at my divorce at my my divorce attorney and thought, first of all, how much money I got to pay mm-hmm. you, and uh, did I pick the right one, and when do I sign? I've done. I've been there, and I just know that God is faithful. He is faithful. He is constantly. And always working for our good. And in the end, he is faithful. He is the best 
orchestra conductor I've ever seen. I've always been fascinated by that job. I would never want it. I failed music theory twice. I literally cheated my way out of it. I'm yeah. sorry if my professor's <laughs> there you listening. Go, Belmont. Um, but an orchestra conductor can make all of the musicians crescendo and get soft. He can make them work to where it, it's a masterpiece. God is that. He is that thing. And so Sunday morning, I was sitting in worship at church and my pastor said, God is speaking to us. Are we listening? What is he saying? And we just took a moment. We just sat there kind of quietly. And God said to me, as plainly as I'm sitting here, you've always said I was a conductor. Will you let me do it? Will you let me conduct? Will you take your hands off, Melissa? Will you let me make a masterpiece of the mess, please? And that's what I would say. He's he's working for, he is for you. He's not against you, but you're right. You're right, my friend. It sucks. Mm-hmm. It really does. And I'm sorry. What happened that you didn't sign the papers? Um, That's like as close as you could get. Like I have an attorney, I have the papers. We're splitting it up. I'm moving with mama. Well, we did, I didn't have papers sitting in front of me. We were, but I mean, what just went, how did, how did you go from, we are really getting a divorce. I've hired an attorney to we are now married for 24 years. That's a really good question. And I wish I could remember that evening or that day. And I don't think it was any one particular thing. We were still living in the home together. Here were these children that we had fought tooth and nail to have. I did not want that to be the case for them. I know that my parents were probably interceding to say the least, as were his. They really, really were. I mean, I'm so happy that we have that on our side, praying parents. Mm -hmm. Um. And I think that at just the right moment, our our heart softened at the time that we, I, I, I don't know. I, I wish I could remember what that instance was. I feel like I've lived a lifetime since then. Mm-hmm. But, um, which is interesting too, that you're like, there wasn't this one moment. It just kind of flowed back in. And I'm not saying the next day you're like renewing your no. vows. Absolutely not. Um, but that it was just a process that you're willing to give yourself over to. Yeah. And we went through, uh, started seeing a counselor again, a different one, because by this point we were in Texas, we started seeing a marriage counselor. He worked wonders with us. He, um, we, we had to talk about the death of dreams and how that can really to a man, he, which he bases a lot of his pride on ensuring that this happens for his family. I didn't understand all that, mm-hmm. you know, um, th- th- men are, they're little clay boxes. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? And they're, they're tender. Yeah. They're hard on the outside, but they're so tender inside. And I didn't know. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't realize. And so um, I learned all that. And we just began to, God just began to move and he began to work. And you said, well, I mean, I know it didn't happen overnight. You didn't renew your vows or anything, but we actually, we did. We Nothing did not overnight, but you did. Right, oh, for yeah. sure. But we did renew our vows. Um, he surprised me, actually, in Hawaii a couple of years ago. We went with, you knew you were going to Hawaii. I knew I was going and we went with our two best, our two sets of best uh-huh. friend couples. Um, one of which is our pastor. So David arranged, he bought me a ring and everything. He arranged that on our last night, we would go down to the beach and our pastor would pull out his Bible and David had written vows. And there is a picture of us on the beach. And then here are my two best girlfriends standing beside me as if they were bridesmaids. And he it was just beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. And then the words I said to him, because I had not written vows. Yeah. You're like, thanks for the heads up. Yeah. yeah. And so the words, the only words that I had after he'd given me this beautiful thing, the only thing I could say to him was, at the end of it all, it's you. It's just always been you. Because that's how I feel about David Radke. It's just him, man. But the truth is, it's just God. It's just always been God. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. Is that, I can't believe I just shared all that with you. I'm so sorry. Girl, you, I'm supposed to be funny. <laughs> and you got me talking about marriage. And we're both, I'm crying over here. <laughs> like, um, I, I mean, I am a, I'm a big fan of marriage. I love marriage. I love my man. Um, and I have seen some marriages, some around us go through hell like this. Um, How long have y'all been married? 17 years. 
Have you ever hit moments like that? Or would you say it's been smooth sailing? Uh, It's definitely not smooth sailing, but our hard times definitely were circumstantial when our kids came home through our adoption process and when our kids came from home from Haiti. Okay. Were probably the two hardest years of my life after the kids came home. Uh huh. They were four and a half and two. And I had a six year old, a four year old, a four year old, and a two year old like overnight. And um, those were hard times for us. Mm. Um, And then we hit another hard time like two years ago. Aaron and I were just talking about this the other day. And he went to counseling. um, And I've been to counseling. We were fans, get Mm -hmm. into the counseling. Um, It was just a hard season for him at work with Mm -hmm. taking on a lot of responsibility as a pastor and an elder and a leader. And, um, our, our struggles could be that we, we definitely do ministry together, but we both have our thing, yeah. you know? And so sometimes Aaron can take on so much weight and not ever let me in on it mm-hmm. because he doesn't want me to be burdened with it. He doesn't, you know, whatever. And then I think everything's just fine and dandy. And then he gets, you know, the shingles because he's so stressed, you know? Oh, so wow. like, so we have, no, we have had hard, but I have had some friends who have had hard, like hard, um, and everything you're saying, I'm just like, God has been so kind to them and so faithful. Mm-hmm. And when I asked you if you would do it again to get where you are, um, I have a friend that I know they would say yes, because their marriage would not be what it is today. Yeah. Had they not walked through what they walked through. Well, don't don't think it's lost on me that David and I, and that with this show coming out, are about to be maybe under a microscope. Mm-hmm. I, I It's funny because when David and I met in 1993, mm-hmm. we met. Um, we knew that we were called to something together. Now, being from the Bible Belt, when you're called, mm-hmm. I'm using my quote, my yeah, yeah, quotes I got here. It. It's to be a pastor and a pastor's wife. wife. So yes. you have to know that I was like, oh God, please, no, uh-huh. not me. I yeah. couldn't be a pastor's wife if you paid me. Uh-huh. I mean, I've just got a mouth on me and I'm unfiltered. I'm a bit salty at times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, That's why I like you. Yeah, so... I just knew that couldn't be the case. So then I thought, well, what else is there? Politics. What do we do? Sweet <laughs> Jesus, no. Um, but we we always knew we were called to something. I thought it would probably be vocally that I would uh-huh. I would sing and, and he would, would be manage my manager, you, yeah. you know? So we, we go through these things in our marriage and nothing is really working out, panning out for me with my, you know, my dreams in Nashville. That also was a, a big hurt for us and a letdown for us. And now here we are. And I just think to myself, thank you, Jesus, that our hard times came then Mm. so that when cameras are on us and a crew is around us, when our house is being filmed and we are being tossed and turned every which way, we know each other so well. And I check the temperature gauge on our marriage all the time. Mm -hmm. We talk about it. We're open. We bring everything into the light. We keep nothing in the shadows. Thank you that we learned that now. Wow. By now, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because it's made you a better person and who Mm -hmm. you are. And then, and like you said, the microscope is coming, you know? Um, Okay, so what I do, what I like to finish these with is what you're loving. Okay. And what you're reading. I wanted so badly, Melissa, to have you walk over here and for us to have some vegan queso together. (gasps) No, I won't do it. I will not do it in Jesus' name. I don't know what's wrong with you. (laughs) Now, listen, I... The best vegan queso is one that Aaron Ivy makes, and he's just not in the kitchen today. But I was gonna make you Thank some you vegan. Jesus. <laughs> I was gonna make you some <laughs> vegan queso. You, you would have tried it. I yes, you would have. I, 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 I oh, can't, I Melissa, can't understand it. I can't understand it, and I'm, I'm offended. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I am not a vegan. But we, Jamie, you're dangerously close. I, well, I had chicken today at Chick Fil A, but that's Christian chicken, so it Did you doesn't matter. Grilled nuggets. No, let me tell you, you're gonna be proud of me. I ordered a salad. And no, no, wait, 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 with chicken on it. And they gave it to me and it had grilled chicken on it. And I did not want grilled chicken. So I went and bought some nuggets and put the nuggets on the salad. Actually, I am kind of proud of you. Thank you. Very nice. Because I tried to have grilled chicken at Chick-fil-A and it just does not taste the same. No, it doesn't. I need that, all that stuff on it. (laughs) Um, I'm not vegan, but our daughter is allergic to dairy. Oh, is she really? Yes. And so Erin does all kinds of things to make things that she can't have that she can't have. Okay. So here's what I always tell people about vegan queso. You know, it, no, Aaron and I, listen, what's today, Wednesday? Monday, we had our little books and brews event in Houston. And afterwards we went and we ate like we had never eaten it before in our lives. We had queso <laughs> and chips and pizza and a burger. Because she wasn't with y'all and you could. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay. what I'm saying is we love some queso, okay? <laughs> okay. 
But if you chase, if you taste vegan queso, I will tell you, it doesn't taste like queso, Mm -hmm. but it tastes like vegan queso. And if you can't have dairy, you love it. Okay. To the (laughs) listeners, (laughs) let me just say something to you right now. Jamie and her big dimples are just smiling (laughs) so big talking about vegan queso, but I look behind her eyes. She don't mean what she's saying. (laughs) (laughs) Now, let me tell you, we aired, I had the queso on Monday night at a, bar called Flying Saucer. We ate that queso like we hadn't eaten in three days. So <laughs> let me tell you, we love some queso. Right. But we'll also eat vegan queso with that's, story. That's good. Okay, that's good. I would try it, but it stand, as a Texan, it's I know. against everything I believe. Oh, I know. I know. Yeah. Listen. But I, I'm willing to, you know, I'm willing to try it, but I don't know. Okay, don't what know. are you loving these days? What am I loving these days? Um... I recently discovered the Calm app. Have you ever discovered the Calm app? Do y'all know what that is? No, tell me. Because I said it to my counselor and she goes, yeah. And I said, well, you never told me about it. It's your job. Tell me. I said, well, you never told me about it. She goes, I'm sorry. I probably should have told you about that. I probably told you about that a year ago. It's an app on your phone. And I think I accidentally bought the premium version, which is $80. (laughs) I'm sorry, David Radke, if you're listening. But um. It literally will send you a reminder to just have moments within your day of kind of quiet meditation, which I used to think meditation. <gasps> it's of the devil. That's of the devil. It's that satanic. is so new age. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, wait, I could just pray. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Um, but it's all the beautiful scenes. They come up on your phone. You can pick the lake scene or the beach scene or the whatever. And it's got this comforting sounds. What scene do you usually go for? What's your, what's your oh, scene? Oh, right now I'm using a different one every single day. Oh, okay. Because uh, I'm just trying to see which one I like okay, best. Okay, okay. And uh, it's actually really calming to take that moment out of your day when I'm feeling overwhelmed, when I'm filming or whatever, and just whew, have a moment uh-huh. and um, and refocus. Yeah. And that's been really good for me. Yeah. You know, I sadly am a woman who gets too busy for God. Mm-hmm. That's just the, you want to yeah. know the mm-hmm. embarrassing truth? There it is. Yeah. Um, I'm like, God, could you just keep up with me and my kids and my schedule, please? That'd be great. Thank right. you. Uh-huh. Um, so I've kind of used that to just settle me a little yeah. bit. I like that. That's good. Um, okay, okay. Can I tell you a yoga story real quick? Yeah. So do you, have you ever done yoga? I have. Yes. Okay. So I like yoga, but I, if I'm going to like put workout clothes on, and take an hour. I want to sweat and I want to breathe hard and I want to like work out. Uh-huh. But my girlfriend, Jen, teaches yoga. And so I, should t- I went to her class and it was in a pretty like intense season. And so we did the yoga, but it was hot yoga. So I was sweating. So Ooh, good. Yeah. 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 At the end, um, she tells you to do something. I don't know how I was laying, whatever. And she turns the music down and she just speaks like encourage. She's a Christian. So she's mm-hmm. not saying crazy things. And Melissa, I am laying there on the ground and I am bawling. <gasps> I'm bawling. Yeah. Because it's like I stopped. Right. And every, my body stopped, my brain stopped, my heart stopped. And I, I felt like I just had this well built mm-hmm. up. And for a moment, I could let it out. I, I know that feeling. Um, there is something about stopping and just listening and just being and your emotions might dangerously catch up with yes. you. Yes. And I sometimes, I, I'm a pretty high capacity person, uh-huh. so I can handle, but sometimes I feel like I shouldn't stop. Like if I stop and slow down, isn't there something I should be doing? Yeah. Like that's how I feel. Yeah. There's always something to do though. You know, you said you're a high capacity person. I think- I think I am. I think I am a relatively low mm-hmm. capacity person. What's your Enneagram number? I'm a seven. Okay. So fun. I like that. Fun, uh, fun, yeah, fun. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't like stress and I don't handle it well. Yeah. So yeah. So that's kind of, and I think that's why I've mentioned like like the word counselor like every two seconds yeah. on this podcast uh-huh. because that's helping me right now. Having yeah. someone to talk to and, and you know, process is really helping me because I don't handle stress very well. Well, I'm way, not saying I do either. And one thing I'm stressed out about, speaking of your daughter who's allergic to dairy, uh-huh. I just did an allergy test for food Uh-oh. and the results are in. And so I called my doctor and I said, can't y'all just email them to me? And he said, no, I'd like for you to come in. <laughs> I'd like to walk you through these things. And I said, so what's the worst? So help me, be? Dr. Thomas. <laughs> Listen to me, man. If I can't have a loaded baked potato, me and you are going to blows. <laughs> and he said, you know what he said? Just come in. <gasps> oh, God. 
God, what if I can't have sour cream anymore? You know what? So have you had symptoms? Like, I don't know. I don't know if I've had symptoms, Jamie. I haven't. I don't know what okay. symptoms am I See, my for. daughter didn't know she was having them until she wasn't. And then she's like, oh, my stomach doesn't hurt today. Like, it's always like, poor thing. Yeah. I don't know. But what, it wasn't like so bad that no, it was going to kill her. No, I notice anything in particular. You you have to tell me what you're allergic to when you have to oh, go to the doctor. Oh, you would just love that, <laughs> wouldn't you? <laughs> I'll send you all of our recipes. All oh, right. What if he says gluten? Is that big? Um, it's just so hard. That's yeah. really hard. Like, you got to get new cooking utensils because they can't touch gluten. What in the world is that about? If it's not going to kill you, you'll be fine. Now, in Austin, you can be anything because you can you can eat anywhere here and get like air and it tastes good. Like, I just like a side of air. Because see, I'm telling you, if I look at that list and it's like red meat, cheese, dairy, I'm going to be like, David, we got to move. We're done. We're going to move. We're going, going to Austin. Texas anymore. No. Um, okay. I sidetracked you. You're loving the Calm app. Yeah. Well, and the other thing, what was that your original question? What am I loving right now? Yeah. What are three things you're loving? Uh, the other thing is I get stuck. If I get stuck on a worship song, I play it over and over and over and I just cry and cry and cry. Mm -hmm. And it's not an Austin Stone worship song. Oh, but Jamie, I, I mean, Aaron Ivey didn't write it. Can it's I okay. still say it? Yes. Are you sure? We are, we are a... Uh, I bet if Aaron Ivey had written it, it'd be even better. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, It's called Here Again by Elevation Worship. I, yes, keep going. I love that song. Mm. And it says, I can't go back to the beginning. I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring, but I'm right here in the middle. Will you meet me here again? And that's exactly how I feel. Yeah. I don't know what's coming up next yeah. with the show. I, I don't know. I don't even know how good my book sold. I, I never right. asked. I didn't yeah. know I was supposed to keep tabs on that. I just know I'm right here. And I need you to be right here with me. And he always is. I love worship songs so much. Thankfully, I've married to a worship pastor, but I get stuck. I mean, I like listening to so many things. This is not a worship album, but have you heard Lauren Daigle's new album? No, but I've heard great things about it. I cannot stop listening to it. In fact, I listen to it. Every time before I'm going to go do something, I, I listened to it this morning because I did those TV shows. Yeah. I don't know. It just helps me like, yeah, God. Yes. Yes. <laughs> really? And so Her before voice, I speak, I'm word. jamming to Lauren Dig. I mean, I just love that new album. Okay, good. That's a good one. I need to get my oh, kids on that. It is so good. Okay, what else? One more thing. You got one more? Do I have one more? You don't have to. What, what, I, mean, I don't know what you said either. What do you, I don't remember. What um, are some of your things? What am I loving? Oh, I'll tell you one right now. Look at these new shoes I got on. I you talked about them yesterday because they're made out of vegan cheese or something. I don't even know what they're made <laughs> out of. I think wool from like Australia or something. These are all birds. Are they and they really have the come up on my Instagram ad a thousand times. I and finally, I was like, okay, I'm going to get them. Instagram ads. Yes. I am a sucker for Instagram I ads. Bought it. Yes. I buy everything I see. Um, and usually it works out. Like I literally put these shoes on my feet yesterday and said, I'm never taking them off. Oh, that's nice. They're great. I have a pair of tennis shoes that I ordered from an Instagram ad. They're Astros tennis shoes. Y'all love the Astros. Oh, yes. Did you know I sang there? Yeah, no. Did you know I sang at the Astros game? The last home game of the season, I sang this God year? Bless America during the oh, seventh inning congrats. stretch. Yeah, it'll be on the finale episode of, of our show. That is so amazing. Um, I am an Astros fan. My brother lives in Houston as a big Astros fan. I'm huge. Um, and I, I knew you guys were, it was fun to watch that last year, wasn't it? Yes, it really, it it really was. Um, I've been brokenhearted this year, but. I know. I'm recovering. Um, this will already have happened, but uh, who are you going for? In the World Series? Yeah, do you care since. To be perfectly honest, I think the Red Sox are a nicer group of guys. Yeah. The, I like their team camaraderie. I do too. Better it than the Dodgers. reminds me of the Astros. Better than the Dodgers, yeah. for sure. I'm going for the uh, Boston as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Are you reading anything? Yeah. I'm reading Love is a Choice. Okay. Um, it's a it's an older book by Frank Minnerth, Um, and it's about a, a, some addictive relation, codependency and stuff like that in relationships. And so we're dealing with some stuff in my family. So mm -hmm. I'm reading that. Um, at my counselor's recommendation. Nice. Should have known. It's got big words in yep. it. Um, I'm reading Soul Keeper, Soul Keeping by John Ortberg. Okay. Which I am doing with a group online and we're doing a book club kind of together. It's an older book, mm -hmm. but yeah. doesn't mean the best no. books are current books. Uh -uh. Um, so I'm doing that one, taking care of my soul. And then I'm just reading a fluff. It's just pure D fluff. It's called Sometimes I Lie. 
by Alice Feeney, I think. And it's just kind of a psychological thriller, and I like Oh, those. you like those. When it gets rainy and cold uh-huh. outside, yeah. I like oh, a good little thriller. This is a rainy and cold day in Austin when you're here. I'm sorry. It's going to be sunny tomorrow. It's been raining oh, it's literally for like 17 years right now. It really like. has. Yes. I told your assistant, I go, okay, so I literally got here today by plane, by car, and then by boat. I mean, I've like, I did you know, everything but riding a camel. Yes. To well, get we don't have camels you. out here, but. But you do have deer because they almost hit one. We saw a really pretty deer today. I do have deer out here. Yes. Um, Melissa, this has been a pure joy. <laughs> oh, thanks. I am so, and I say this and I, and I don't mean it in like a, grandma type of way. I'm so stinking proud of you. Oh, um, I'm proud of you, champion uh, God. I'm proud of you, champion restoration. I'm proud of you, champion your family and your marriage. And I cannot wait to see what God does through fill in the blank, whatever the show's name is. I know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what he's got up his sleeve, but man, every day with him is an adventure. And right. so, I'm just, I'm so thrilled that if, if the scripture is true, that his eyes go to and fro looking for someone to, you know, serve him and that he landed on me for some odd reason. Yeah. yeah you yeah. know, who will, who, what is it? Who will worship him in spirit and in truth? And he found that in me. I'm just really shocked it. by that. So I hope I, I hope I make him proud. I love it. <laughs> okay. Thanks for coming on the happy hour. Thank you. Guys, don't forget, Third Love is passionate about the perfect fit, and they believe it's time for your bra to fit you, not the other way around. Their collections are designed by women for women, so you will love the way you feel under each and every look. And right now, they offer over 70 sizes and more than a dozen styles, so you will find the perfect bra for every moment and every outfit. Get 15% off your first purchase by going to thirdlove.com slash Jamie today. You guys, even though I didn't have any vegan queso to share with Melissa, what we did share in my studio was so enjoyable. When Melissa shared with us about her and her husband's marriage seasons, I know that you felt the tenderness and genuineness in their love. I'm so grateful for her wisdom to share about how to offer care towards a friend walking in a painful season. If you or someone you love is in the midst of a painful season in your marriage or relationship with family, I hope that you're going to share this show with them or someone that you can confide in about the pain and struggle to choose restoration. I hope you heard from our conversation how important and impactful counseling has been in both our marriages and personal stories. I'm going to say it again, and I say it over and over and over again. Counseling is so very helpful. Melissa's new show is going to air next year on the USA Network. Be sure you're following her on all the social media so you do not miss out on the hilarious and lovable Radke family. Guys, today's show was edited by Chris with Podshaper, and the music was developed for the show by Matt Graham. Next week, my guest is someone that I have been looking so forward to sharing with you, and that is Mary Beth Chapman. Mary Beth Chapman is wife to Stephen Curtis Chapman. She's an adoptive mama. She's an advocate for adoption. She's a New York Times bestselling author, and she was so much fun for me to sit down with. We knew each other years ago when my family lived in Tennessee, and it was so great to catch back up with her a couple of weeks ago. You're going to love our conversation. You guys, enjoy your week. Share the show with a girlfriend. Have a happy hour with a friend, and I will see you guys back here next week with my guest, Mary Beth Chapman. 